And let's bring in Vanderbilt head coach Jerry Stackhouse. He joins us now. Uh, great to have you with us. Let me ask you this. As we mentioned in the lead-in, um, for a while you've been a leading head coaching candidate in the NBA. Uh, what's the main thing you want to accomplish at Vanderbilt? Well, I just wanted to, to come in and, and, and coach. I mean, I enjoy coaching. I enjoy teaching. Um, this is a, a situation that obviously had a, you know, a disappointing season last year and, and being able to come in and, and, and really turn things around. Uh, Malcolm Turner, who's the athletic director here now, uh, I worked with him as the president of the G League. We were able to, to build a relationship there, really respecting the things that he did from the standpoint of growing the league. I think he, we had mutual respect from, um, from watching me and, and how I was able to build teams you know, in the G League, and it felt like this was a great situation for me to come in and, and, and help these young men not only grow on the basketball court, but, but grow you know, off the court as well. So it's, it's, it's a challenge, obviously, from, you know, from what I've been doing, just dealing with guys, with pros, where you can pretty much work with them for two or three hours and they go home. But now I have, uh, you know, had to take on a few more issues with, with, with kids as they learn to adjust to college life and those different things. But, I, but I'm really up for the challenge and excited about it. What kinds of issues have you seen so far in that vein? Man, already. I mean, just been here two days and... You know, just uh, with, you know, parents trying to trying to figure out things as far as like summer school and all mm. those different type of things, just challenges that you, you didn't really think about as a coach, but seeing where, um, you know, when can you be on the court with them, when can't, you can't be on the court, when you can't go on the road, when you can't go on the road, just kind of playing a little catch up there. So that's why it's really important to have a, a great team around you. And that's what I've been doing over the last you know, you know, since I've taken over these last 12 days and just trying to get the staff and to, to help me in those areas that um, I know that are my weaknesses and then where I can really focus in on my strengths and that's being on the court and, and developing. You signed a deal with Vanderbilt just days before the Memphis Grizzlies let J.B. Bickerstaff go. So considering um, your aspirations to be an NBA head coach, what's the first thing that went through your mind when you heard that news? Well, I was really disappointed. I mean, I thought, you know, from 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 how the, the uptick that the season finished on for the, for the Grizzlies, I thought they would give JB a little more uh, you know, length there to, to be able to, to continue to grow that team. Um, obviously, we had a, a, a lot of injuries during the course of that year. I think that which kind of curtailed our, you know, our, our victories for, for the year started off with a really good start. So I was disappointed there, but you know, I just think that this was, and like I said before, that's probably my trajectory had me uh, probably interviewing for a couple of jobs this, this, this offseason and would have been in play for, for some of those openings that was there. But, you know, like my, my mom would always say, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And I had a bird in the hand where I could come in and really do what I want to wanted do. And that's, that's be a head coach and be able to, to lead a program. Um, and, and, and I do it, you know, pretty much my own way. So I, I was excited about that opportunity. And, and I know. You know, a lot of people like it feel like this is a stepping stone for uh, for something else. But I'm just content with being here, mm -hmm. being able to, to accept this challenge of, of, of helping to, to bring bring the magic back to Memorial, as they would say. And, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Bringing the magic back. You talk about that. It's a daunting task in some ways. They can go in 18 in the SEC. How do you look at recruiting? Because that's got to be one of the toughest things coming from the pros that you now face in college. Well, I mean, I've, I've already been out and, uh, you know, talked with a couple of kids and from just my interaction with them, they're excited. They're excited about the possibility of coming. So if it goes as well as it goes, recruiting goes as well as going in these first two trips, then I feel like I'll be okay. <laughs> but, uh, but, but it, again, it's about having, ha having contacts and having people that are, are you know, well-connected. And I, I started in the grassroots, so I, I have a lot of directors and coaches that I know from being out on the circuit, being out on the grind. Um, to get to this point. So I'm pretty sure those relationships will come back into play. And again, you know, having a staff that is, is well versed in, in, in recruiting and understand. But I think the important part is, you know, recruiting is great. But mm -hmm. again, where we are and, and, and how we and the, the type of kids that we get, the, the high academic kids that's, that's required to be able to come to this institution, you know, the development piece has to be huge for us. So not only recruiting important, but being able to get out on the court and, and put that sweat equity in is, 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 is equally as important to me. You know, one of the big issues that's come up this past season with Zion Williamson and other college stars is this idea of paying players. Do we reach a point at some point in the college game where we play players? Where do you stand on that now that you're back in the college game, having come from it, having been a star, a couple seconds left? What do you think about that issue? 
Well, I mean, I would love for us to put in something in place to, to incentivize guys graduating. I mean, whether it's actually paying players, I don't know if that's the way, but being able to have an annuity of, of some sort to where, you know, when these kids get 30, 35 years old and for their contributions to um, the athletics program and to the NCAA that they can re receive from, from that. So um, hopefully they're just being a part of the NCAA now. Um, that we could kind of raise some of those issues. And, 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 but again, just incentivizing these kids to, to get their education. Um, and I think that maybe that would bode well for them staying in it a little bit longer, making sure that they, they did hang around to get their de degree.